So in this problem, we have an infinitely long metal pipe. And these three sides, the uncolored sides, are all grounded. So they all have a potential of zero. And this side has a potential that is a function of y. So the potential varies along this direction. So what we want to find is the potential inside this pipe. And so by separation of variables, we know that the answer is going to look something like this. So I'm not going to explain why you can see these. You can see the derivation of this in one of the examples in the book. So it's a standard procedure, a separation of variables. You see that the, the answer has to look something like this. So now we need to figure out what these constants should be. And we can do that by using our boundary conditions. So the first boundary condition, let's consider x is equal to 0, so the yz plane. So we know that on this plane, the potential has to be equal to 0. So when x is equal to 0, the potential has to be equal to 0. And so you see that when x is equal to 0, both of these are going to be equal to 1, so you get a plus b. And then we're going to multiply by this thing over here. I'm not going to write it out. So you know that if we need it, if we want the potential to be equal to 0, regardless of the values in here, a plus b has to be equal to 0, right? So a has to be equal to negative b. So this expression here, we can actually change it into something like this. Or we can actually rewrite this as some constant times the hyperbolic function of hyperbolic sine function of kx. Because by definition, e to the x plus e to the x minus e to the negative x divided by 2 is defined this way. So we can actually rewrite this expression here as something like this. So we've obtained our first simplification. So with that boundary condition, our answer now looks something like this. So the next step, let's consider when y is equal to 0. So on this plane, x z plane, the potential also has to be equal to 0. So when y equal to 0, the potential has to be equal to 0. So you see that sine ky, I'm just going to rewrite this. Sine ky is going to be equal to 0 when y is equal to 0 because sine 0 is 0. Well, cosine of 0 is equal to 1. So in order for the expression to be always equal to 0, d has to be equal to 0. So now we can infer that d has to be equal to 0. So we've obtained another simplification. So the third simplification will bring us the value of k, because we know that when y is equal to a, v also has to be equal to 0. So when y equal to a, this top plate over here, So for, for this to be true, you, you can see that when y is equal to a, we're going to get a sine ka. And then regardless of the values of what we have in the front, this always has to be equal to 0. So sine ka will, will have to be equal to 0 in order for this condition to be true. And this will only happen when ka is equal to n pi, where n is some integer. So we can infer that k is equal to n pi over a. So now we've found another constant, so you can see that our answer can be written as something like this, so n pi x over a, and the sign n pi x over a, n pi y over a. And then we know that the potential can be a linear combination of all possible, all possible solutions, right? So there is a different solution for every different n. So we can combine all this, all the solutions like this. And then you see that in order to complete our solution, we still have one more unknown, that is cn. And that will be determined by our final boundary condition, that is the potential that's given to us. So we know that vby, so on this plate over here, when x is equal to b, is going to be equal to some function of y, which is given to us. So substituting back into the expression we have on top, we get 
something like this. And then we're going to use Fourier's trick. So we're going to integrate both sides after multiplying sine so some dummy variable and just to call it m so we're going to multiply this and then integrate it on both sides so on the left hand side we get this on the right hand side thanks to Fourier's trick we know that all the terms are going to be equal to zero when n is not equal to m and so the only surviving term is the term that's equal to m so on the right hand side we get something like this so these terms stay because they're constants and then the, integ the integral will give us a over 2 and so you see that our constant c so now I'm gonna use the n for the index because I like using n so you see that this constant is actually given to us by this expression And then I'm just dividing these terms over to the other side. And there's an integral of, so it's n pi y. So you see that our constant c is determined by this expression. And then you can see that c is determined by the given function. And then once we found c, we can combine it back into the, the full solution that is the linear combination of all these possible solutions. So you get a sine h n pi x over a and then a sine n pi y over a. So this is the general solution. So you have this expression and then the c is going to be determined like this and the c is going to be determined by this given function.